<laughs> Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my channel. This is Naman. Today we're looking at Joker the Deluxe Edition by Inart. This is a two-pack version with rooted hair. Inart, of course, is a new toy company created by Queen Studios Collectibles, renowned for making high-end statues. And this is Inart's first release in competition with Hot Toys, but at a much higher price for 1-6 scale collectibles. There's been a lot of excitement around this toy because of the price and marketing. I personally don't know if it's going to live up to the hype, and I don't know if it's going to be worth two weeks rent in Toronto. I just want to give a quick shout out to Kit Chen at 1-6 Kit for shipping my item so fast. Item arrived in five days from Hong Kong to Toronto, and the packaging was excellent, as was the customer service. On the other hand, my other supplier held my payment for nine months without shipping the item. I'm not going to name or shame them, but it was a bit of a disgrace. Anyway, let's get this giant box into the light box for a detailed examination and then bring it all out for some fun poses. Before we do, I hope you can hit the like button and the subscribe button to support my young channel. So here's the top of the box. It's all very high quality, but I feel the box is massive. Compare this to a Hot Toys box. I'm sure Inart could have made this smaller. Anyway, let's look at the side of the box now. The side of the box has lots of logos and warnings. So as soon as you open the cardboard box, you're gonna find a styrofoam box inside with a envelope on top. Inside the envelope, you have a thank you letter. This is a really nice touch from Inart. Thank you for paying us so much and being so patient with our supply chain issues. There's a nice little movie stub with the Joker on it. Love the purple and green color. I must confess, I don't know what this is. It looks like some sort of serial number, but that is the instructions. This is a really nice booklet. It's very nicely crafted. Feels very premium. Going through it quickly because I can't wait to get to the toy, but highly detailed manual here. Look at all those accessories, grenade, machine gun, pistol, dollar bill. It's a nice touch, shows you where everything is in the box. Some warnings, for example, don't swallow the small accessories, please. Here's lots of information about the articulation. Tells you how to take out the hands and the arms. Some more details about the weapons. Here's some about the head sculpt. Well, anyway, let's look at the cardboard box in more detail now. So here's the cardboard box. It's quite thick. It will protect your jokers. It's like a statue box with a couple of straps on it. Wow, that's a lot of accessories. Look at that. I wish the box had a bit more personality. It feels like an appliance box. But let's take a quick look at the heads. Whoa. Nice case with the Inart logo, but look at that sculpt. Gorgeous paint apps. This is from the beginning of the movie when his face paint is on full. Little styrofoam piece over there just to hold in place. Look at that hair. Beautifully dyed. Whoa, I think I like this head even more. This is from the middle of the film when his paint is coming off. I think this is from the jail scene. It's got a smirk on its face. It looks fantastic. This is the body for the jail scene. I think the knees are bent just to get in the box, but that is really nice. Good craftsmanship. Oh, look at that coat. Very nice. We're gonna get the grenades inside. 
nice tailoring. I love the wear. That's really nice. Love it. Let's look at the second part of the box. So here you have the diorama pieces in the second layer. So this piece on the left is die cast. I'm gonna use my brother-in-law's keychain gift. Listen to that, that's pure die cast. So fitting this together shouldn't be hard. There you go. Let's put the bench on. Wow, look at that. There's so much detail, even under the bench. It looks like a used bench from a jail cell. Listen to that die cast. Die cast bench, die cast jail cell. So you can probably get a lot of other figures on this. Joker is not ready, but we have some other Batman figures. So here is Selena Kyle by Hot Toys, just chilling. Here is Harvey Dent, Two-Face, again by Hot Toys. Here is Catwoman's cat. <laughs> here is Wicked for no reason. She doesn't like it. But here are the smaller accessories for Joker. I'm a bit concerned about the spring on the grenades. I'm afraid it's going to break, but so far it's okay. But the plastic is nicely molded for the MK2, M67, and M26 hand grenades. Lots of Joker cash for some fun scenes. Nicely printed. Intricate work on the handcuffs. Beautiful, delicate work on the cards. Wow, look at that. That's gorgeous. I like the switchblade. Unfortunately, mine opens and closes far too easily. It's a bit loose. Here's the modified clock for Heat Ledger's Joker. Again, my clip comes out too easily, unfortunately. Here's the diecast M76 submachine gun. The only problem is it's quite heavy, so you have to be a bit careful. Let's look at the hands now. So you've got two extra forearms, two clapping hands, one finger pointing hand, six gloves, in addition to the two gloves on his body already. Inart has innovated here by getting rid of the peg system. So instead of the pegs, you have magnets and the hand goes on very easily, comes off very easily, saves a lot of frustration. It fits quite nicely too. I love it. Taking a closer look at the gloves now, and I can't help but respect the craftsmanship by Inart. Look at the great attention to detail. The ripples all around the gloves, so realistic. Hot Toys does these ripples too, but they look so much better on these. Look at the stitching on the side. Very realistic. It actually does look like it's on a human hand. Ripples on the fingers, the thumbs. It's great attention to detail. This is all fantastic molding. Gorgeous. Here's the finger pointing glove. So let's look at the ungloved hands now. Wow, that is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful paint apps. Skin tone is so realistic. This is next level stuff. So much attention to detail. Look at the palm of the hand. Look at the fingernails. You can even see the veins. <laughs> it looks like they took a real hand and just shrunk it down to size. Amazing. Time to check out the soft goods. Start with the coat. I just love this. I love the wear on this. It's so realistic. When the Joker showed up in his purple coat, it was all grimy, all dirty, just like this. Look at that. Back and front, they haven't missed out. Looks like there's all sorts of dirt, all sorts of wear on it. Obviously the Joker didn't go to the dry cleaners. Inside you have space for the grenades. Nice stitching. Nice stitching on the left too. The 
that little button's missing, just like the film on the vest. Shoes are really nicely stitched too. That is just, <laughs> that's incredible work. The other body is just as nicely stitched. Again, you have the missing button, nice stitching on the sleeves. The vest looks great from the back. I love how the socks look. So let's look at the sculpts. I'm very excited. So let's start with the sculpt from the beginning of the film where the makeup is fresh. Look at that. Beautiful mold of Heath Ledger's face. Gorgeous paint apps. Like the scar on the side of his cheek. Scars all around his face, creases on his forehead. The side profile of Heath Ledger is amazing. Wow. The hair is really beautifully dyed. There's so much richness to the texture, to the color. It's just gorgeous. The roots are a bit lighter, looks really good. So here is the one from the center of the film. When the makeup is coming off, when his face is sweaty, he's got a smirk on his face. I actually prefer the sculpt. Again, nice scar on the cheek. But yeah, everything is smeared. His eyes, his forehead. The hair is actually dyed differently. It's actually richer. There's more tones to the hair. I think it's meant to show that it's sweaty. Fantastic work from in art. Worth every penny. Let's do a comparison with other head sculpts now. So in front you have one six scale sculpts, in the back you have quarter scale sculpts. So here he is with the DX11, the default DX11 smirking sculpt. It was fantastic back in the day, but it's showing its age, especially compared to the new mold from Inart. Everything about it is superior. This is the iconic laughing sculpt. I think the mold on Inart is much better, but the laughing sculpt has its own charm. Side profile is definitely better on Inart. This is my favorite Hot Toy sculpt, the Bank Robber 2.0. Still holds up. The quarter scale heat ledger sculpt was a bit of a disappointment. There's something off about it. It looks good and it looks bad all at once. This is a custom sculpt I bought. Paintwork isn't that good, but the mold is pretty good. So let's compare the Hot Toys body with the Inart body. On the left, you have lots and lots of grease and dirt on the sleeves too. Even on the back, Inart has some authentic looking dirt and wear and tear. Look at that some fading too, but the Hot Toys coat is very plain. In addition, you have space for the grenades on the Inart body, but TX-11 is very plain. Again, nothing there. The glove on the Hot Toys body looks fine, but it's much more detailed as you can see on the Inart body. Look at that. Time to rotate the eyes. I must confess I'm a bit nervous. Don't want to break the mechanism. So you lift the patch at the back. There's the handle. And you can use that to move the eyes around. As so. <laughs> That's a bit creepy, but yeah. Same with the other head, I guess. You turn it around, lift the head patch at the back. Have to be a bit careful. 
but it really adds flavor to the set. You can change the look a little bit by just switching the eyes around. I'm going to show you how easy it is to put the head on the body. Just have to match the sculpt with the neck. There you go. Both the heads are on. I'm going to show you how to put the arm on. Again, very easy thanks to this innovative system by Inart with the magnet. Just slide it out, slide it in. There you go. He's pointing a finger at us now. So I really appreciate the system because you're less likely to break the forearms than with the peg system. I've broken my Terminator, I've broken my Hot Toys Luke Skywalker. It happens all the time, but this feels safer. So getting the hand on the arm is just as easy. Just have to line it up. Very easy, especially compared to Hot Toys. So I'm really excited to look at the articulation. Head rotates, no problems at all. Tilts left. Tilts right. Look at that side profile. Looks down. Looks up. The shoulder goes up pretty high. The forearm rotates easily, no problems. Nice double jointed elbows, a bit stiff. Waist tilts to the left, waist tilts to the right. Bends forward, bends back really nicely. Rotates. Double jointed knees. It's a bit stiff. It's a new body, I guess that's why. Kicks forward. And of course, the ankle pivot. Very nice. So the articulation is excellent. So let's look at some problems with this set now. As I mentioned, the magazine comes out very easily, just falls off. The die cast gun is very nice and hefty, but it's a bit too heavy for his hands. So it limits the poses. The magnetic base is very nice, feels good. Solid material, but that font is very plain. <laughs> it's like a Microsoft Word vanilla font. And mine's a bit damaged at the base. I'm going to show you some of the limitations with the stand, actually. So the magnetic base is very powerful in the center. Let me just show you. Look at that. Just sticks to his feet. Unfortunately, the base is not wide enough and the magnet is just in the center. So if you have a more dynamic pose, you just can't, can't pose him very well because all the power is in the center of the base. So you have to move his feet closer together to do that. If they're wider, he's gonna fall. But here is Joker with the grenades in his coat. String is going from his thumb down to that coat over there. Look at all those grenades. And I love this pose. His eyes, they look very imposing, a bit psychotic. And the coat is wired a little bit, so you can Push it out if you want. Look at that. You can add some flow thanks to the wiring. Looks great. Let's look at it from different angles now. So here's the Joker party for a size comparison. You've got Inart Jokers on the left, you've got DX11 2.0 Joker, and then Bank Robber Joker 2.0. So the Hot Toys Jokers are showing their age for sure, 
in terms of sculpting, in terms of the soft goods, in terms of the design, but I still think they hold their own. I especially have a soft spot for Bank Robber 2.0. Here are some of the other bad guys by Hot Toys. Selena Kyle on the left, and then on the right you have Bane, and next to him is Two-Face, all by Hot Toys. And they all look good together, but you can tell the Joker is a bit higher in quality. Here are the NR Jokers with the X08 1989 Joker by Hot Toys, the Granddaddy Joker. So the X19 on the right by Hot Toys were the most important size comparison. And they scale well together. You can do some fun poses. You can do like a stare down. You can also do a fun prison scene. There is Batman staring very intensely at a Joker who is clapping. So my final score for the set is going to be 5 out of 5 stars. I love the sculpts. I love the paint apps on the sculpts. And I love the paint apps on the hands. The bodies are very innovative. Nice work by Inart there. Good articulation too. Great accessories. And I really love the diorama. However, there are some flaws with this set. I do wish that there were more weapons. I wish we had the bazooka, I wish we had the shotgun. I think the magnetic base is okay, but it could have been wider, it could have been more magnetic. And finally, I think the box is a bit sterile. It feels like they packed an appliance. Compare this to the Hot Toys box, which has gorgeous art on it, it has a lot of character, lots of color. I think Inart could have done a better job with the packaging of this set. And finally, the price is quite high. That being said, this is the definitive Joker set right now. If you love Heath Ledger, if you love The Dark Knight, and if you love 1-6 scale figures, you can't go wrong with this 2-pack. So that's it guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you can hit the like button and subscribe button, and I hope you stay tuned for more reviews from Noman, and I hope you stick around for some fun poses from In Art Joker.